present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, it just happens to be Saturday afternoon, August the 9th, 2014. Yes, summer is flying by fast, just like the seasons always fly by fast. Yeah. Fly by night. Except when the dead of winter, when you want to get the hell out of there, you know? When... And that can't go fast enough. For well... Me. You know, it depends on the winter. If it's a mild winter, you know, if it's a mild winter, I, I mean, the weather's been so crazy. Mm. You know, I mean, we've had um, we've had storms, you know, blizzards, nor'easters, whatever you want to call them, and then it would go mild for a while, and then you get a little more snow. But I haven't seen a real solid hardcore winter all winter mm. since I was a kid you know where we used to get heavy snowfall and, it was 1977 and the snowman would last in the front yard the entire winter Thanks. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm talking about snow and blizzards and snow uh -huh. snowmen because it, it's helping us deal with the summer you know it's not it's, it's only hot fun in the summertime. Actually, we've had a very mild summer. Yes, not, not that like many, not that many heat. Four ninety 90 days. Not that many heat waves, mm -hmm. but climate change is affecting the rest of the United States out west with the drought. There's no doubt about that. And then uh, uh, I hear there was, uh, uh, I guess, Torrential rain came and there were mudslides in California. Are you I, kidding? Yeah, it's torrential rains all over the place. There's every. It's see. You see what I mean by being erratic due to climate change? It's just crazy. It's just we're getting everything. I mean, in July, uh, the Midwest got hit with a, a polar vortex. I mean, not not polar vortex like we had in the winter. Yeah, we never felt it. But it was like 68 degrees. Mm -hmm. It, towards the end of July, uh, there, you know, in the northern Midwest. Yes, it, it, place ain't got no water, then in other places, too much water. Too much water. Blah, 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 yeah, blah, erratic, blah. crazy weather. And now, they, uh, they discovered that this uh, giant crater in Siberia is, is what they were afraid of, uh, which is uh, methane gas being released from deep in the earth due to the uh, uh, polar uh, areas melting because of global warming. The earth is farting. Yes, it's, it's, it's earth flatulence. That's exactly. But methane gas is flammable and, ah. and, and there's a lot of it down there underneath the, the, for, the yeah. normal permafrost, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is melting. And uh, also, uh, Antarctica is on its way to becoming a land, well, it always was a land continent, but I mean, a continent where in the summertime there, there will be no ice. It's yeah, I believe I saw something to that effect that it was like that once upon a time. Once well, upon a time it wasn't. Yeah. Well, of today? course, Republicans would say it, it's it's a natural order of things that this climate change happens uh, every uh, fifteen thousand years or so, few hundred uh, thousand years, and and don't believe uh, uh, what the environmentalist liberals say, you know, about the uh, uh, fluorocarbons from big oil and so on, and cutting down the trees. You know, they, they're trying to justify their greed. Mm. Especially windbags like Rush Limbaugh, you know, you know he's anything anything that has to do with profit, he's all for. At at any expense, any yeah, expense. Yeah, mostly uh, poor and middle class people's expense. Well, he doesn't care about animals. No, he no, doesn't care about the environment. He doesn't care no. about uh, like any Republican. They don't care about about things that matter about nature no. and health. You know, they just care about money, like, like money's gonna like 
save the planet from extinction. Maybe they can eat it. Maybe. When the bees are gone, pollination is gone, no more food, maybe they can eat their money. No, what they'll do is they'll take everybody that's collecting welfare and they'll assign a pollination duty to everyone and have them walk around Go out in the fields and, and inject pick... little bits of pollen yeah, yeah, yeah. in every flower so they could earn their keep of, of, of collecting welfare. My levity bells. Let me get the formalities over. <coughs> I would like to pipe aboard my illustrious co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977 with my authentic bosun's whistle. Yes, I do this every week. If you don't like it, it's just too damn bad. I does it because I likes it. Arr, arr. Welcome aboard our uncensored, hard-hitting truth starship <coughs> newsletter censored. The one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Okay, Good. I'm here. So am I. You know, we're we're coming to you every time I get out of bed in the morning. Take a breath. It's a good day. We're coming to you live from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeast of New Jersey. This is Uncensored, Hard Hitting Truth, and I am your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life Twenty One. And of course, you met my co-host. Well, in spirit, verbally. The mysterious, disembodied voice of the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Now, let me begin. All right. <coughs> well, I'll start off with, um, I only have really a couple things to talk about, but they're, they're important. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll start off with the, um, the, uh, the lighter one. It's kind of cute when I read it, but it's so true. The, there was an article uh, that um, was described as this, um, the Pope is poo-pooed. Uh -huh by the GOP for being too much like Jesus. This was a, a statement coming from Republicans because they're not happy with uh, Pope Francis. The they're Pope, not happy with anybody who points up their disdain for the poor. Now, for people that claim to be much closer to God than the rest of us, Republicans uh, said that I guess they feel that a pastor or the Pope or a bishop or, or whatever cannot be too much like Jesus. No. Because if you're like Jesus, it totally... Well, how dare you point up their faults? Yeah, you, you're bringing up, you're exposing <coughs> the, the conservatives. Yeah. But then again... They're hypocrisy. You work for the Lord, but you can't be like the Lord, because then Republicans have to give up their, their fortune. And the Bible says a real Christian follows Jesus, he does what he does. Like the gentleman that asked Jesus in the book of John, John. Well, I want to follow you and yes, uh, I want to uh, receive the, uh, enter the kingdom of uh, heaven, whatever he said, and Jesus says, well, uh, sell off your, your, your material possessions and give it to the poor and then come follow me, and he couldn't do it. Oh, he can't do that. And then Jesus had a comment. Yeah, the comment is why it's so difficult for the rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Right. Okay. Actually, because think, they already have their I God. Think, I think he used the word impossible in the verse. It is impossible if they never give up their God, which is Mula. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Love you of, can't have other gods before him. But the love of money is idolatry, like you always taught me. Okay. What, uh, being that we're on the track of um, uh, Christianity, I would say counterfeit, phony Christianity mm. coming from the right wing. Let me go right to uh, the juicy tidbit. Okay. 
right-wing pastor says the poor should starve. <gasps> Conservative Texas pastor John uh, Hagee, sp oh, yeah, Hagee, spelled uh, capital H-A-G-E-E, -E, and there is a uh, complete video of him saying these things on YouTube. Just, you know, do a search. Look it up. Conservative Texas pastor John Hagee is calling for letting the poor, the unemployed and welfare recipients starve to death. And House Republican uh, represented, House Representatives Michelle Bachman and Kevin Kramer agrees with him. <laughs> and, uh, and where are they getting their agreement from? Certainly not the Bible. Oh, he's, he's, he's a real, real nice guy, a real, real nice pastor that's representing the God of the Bible. Well, he wow. ain't no pastor, and he ain't representing the God of the Bible. And isn't it funny that he happens to be from Texas? Well, of course, he's Southern. He's a conservative, right-wing Texas pastor that is that wants to let the poor starve to death. Yeah. And he went on to 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 mention, you know, uh, about uh, uh, it's not fair for uh, us folk to pay all the taxes and then. Uh, and, and they're riding free and they ride, get a free well, ride. Well, he don't and, pay any taxes with the church. That's he's, what, a, he's a socialist, you see. That's why I... I many, many people yeah. send him money that he uh, administers within the church. That's called socialism. Right. He's a communist. That's why I, 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 I printed, I mean, that's why I typed as a, as a comment that uh, we should start taxing the churches if they if of these course. if these pastors and evangelists are starting to involve themselves in politics and 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 condemning people to death then they should pay taxes like everybody else. everybody else like the sucker middle class of America the first amendment is not supposed to be involved favoring any religion yeah so therefore, no religion should be having tax-exempt status, uh -huh. number one. And certain religions, which are uh, off the mark, so, so, so to speak, not biblical, should not exist. They should not... E oh, they could call themselves something else, of course, but yeah. don't call themselves Christianity. And not one penny of tax dollars should go towards any religion because no religion has been able to prove that their God exists. And I don't want to hear some evangelical born again say, yes, but what about the miracle of birth? What about the, the seed becoming a tree? What about the... That doesn't prove anything. No. That's... It's and a, how about taxing that science, people huh? who have stocks and bonds? There's trillions of dollars waiting to be placed into our treasury. But that doesn't happen because guess who owns all the stocks and bonds? The people that run the world? Yeah, the rich. The plutocrats. So you don't get the tax yeah. then. And CEOs always blame everything on the shareholders. Hey, I oh, thought... Oh no, they're working for the shareholders, man. I thought, I thought common stocks were always meant to be speculative. You know, it's a, it's a chance that you take when you buy a common stock. So why... Why must these elitist shareholders have a sure thing? Who said that common stocks were a oh, sure thing? Oh, but that's the thing about American capitalism. They don't want to take the risk. And the risk is socialized. That is, is given to the taxpayer. The risk. We just saw it with the meltdown. Yeah. And bailed out all the gold dang banks and, and, and et cetera, and the world. Right. Okay? That's where the risk is. They don't want any risk. No. That's how they got into the problems. Because they no can... reserves, derivatives that were worthless, etc., and, and speculation on all the things they bought and this, that, and the other thing. Well, of course, the United States didn't treat the uh, the evil, wicked banksters like Iceland did. Iceland did the right thing and brought them to justice. Of course, the United States didn't do anything because the United States uh, politicians are all paid off. Yeah, that's right. 
Those lobby bribes, man. It, as long as they take them lobby bribes. And anything the rich do is fine with them. Yeah, that's why everything. But those damn poor people. Well, they love to blame the them. Class. They love to blame them. You have to kill them. Start them. Yeah. You know, get rid of them. I, I, I read an old. Got um, that food stamp program. I, 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 oh, those crumbs real, are really hurting the economy. Ooh. I, w I read it, uh, an old uh, George Carlin uh, statement about America is obsessed with bombing brown people. You, you, you show you show them brown people and they bomb them. And he mentioned all the all the areas that the U.S. military bombed, and they're all brown people. It's much easier to bomb brown people than white. Yeah, yeah. You notice that they, they wouldn't pull that shit on 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 Putin, Vladimir Putin. You know that that bullying. The, rep the conservative bullying, you notice, they wouldn't dare do it to Putin. You kidding, man? They'd like to. The so Russian uh, special forces. Neil Khans would like to. And 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 and, the, and what they have in their arsenal? <laughs> yeah, Neil Khans. Say goodbye to your Neil Khans. <laughs> well, it looks like America has lost. It's compassion and empathy uh, these days, uh, Dr. Bill. It's just you never had it. You're fooled if you think it, it, it was ever here. It's never here. How can you say that the United States was ever pa uh, compassionate? Well, when you look at what it did to the Native Americans, and that's from yeah. the beginning. Yeah, you're right. So it's never been here. And the founding fathers, they were slave keepers. And slavery, yes, of course, that's another. And, and, and after and after they freed the slaves, blacks didn't have any um, any any civil rights education in, until the 1960s, 1965. Yeah, but in actuality, they had it under the Fourteenth Amendment. They just didn't enforce it. Right? That's correct. That's correct. I mean, uh, um, um, uh, segregation, separatism, Jim Crow, Jim Crow laws. That, that all took place while the 14th Amendment was sitting there, right? Yeah, because what happened was that the 14th Amendment over time began uh, made corporations persons, supposedly. You see, and that's where they, the, the equality came in. It never mentioned women in the 14th Amendment. And it never mentioned corporations. Women had to. Uh, women couldn't lie. vote until uh, 1920. The, the suffrage, they call it suffrage. Suffragettes, baby. Yeah. Yeah, and guess what? All those uh, hundred and some years, gee whiz! I mean, there were a few who you know fought to uh, get the voting for women, but the great majority of women didn't give a damn. They didn't, um, and they didn't. They still have. They still have not seen equal pay for equal work yet. That too, you know. So, but if they if if they're waiting around for equal pay for equal work, you're never going to get a minimum wage. You're right? never going to get. You're Fair never going to. You're never going to get any of it if you keep on re-electing Republicans. And remember, <laughs> we go back to this all the time, but it it must be stressed often. One of the big flaws with capitalism. First of all, to participate in it, you need capital. Yes. All right, that's who it's going to benefit, the person who has capital. And who has capital? The people that are rolling in dough. Right. And then the boss, who hey. you go to to get a job. Hey, the boss. The boss, the man. Yeah, yeah the boss. The I'm man. The, boss, the man. The man. The man, yeah. He ain't going to hire you unless you produce more for him and he's going to pay you. Otherwise, there's no incentive for him to, to oh, hire you. So there is no fairness. Well, the salaries are capitalism. the salaries are not fair ever. No. Unless you're no. some big shot executive. No, no, no. They're not even fair then. No, because they put in too many hours. Okay. They're, they're on salary. They don't get paid by the hour. No, no, no. The CEOs are paid with stocks and etc. They're not paid by the hour, and they are paid for being lucky 
and being bad. And they have golden parachutes. Well, that's pay. We we get golden showers. Exactly. They get the golden parachutes. Get it? Golden showers. Levity bills. Exactly. The rich are always looking for security, but when the poor or the middle class get some semblance of security, man, they go wild. The rich go wild. Social security, etc. Oh, social security was never meant to be uh, uh, your sole income. Well, jeepers creepers, why is it? Yeah, my, my Aunt Helen said that to me. Yeah. Well, was, why is it? There, well, my aunt and uncle are Republicans. Yeah. And she said uh, Social Security was meant to be a supplement to your retirement. And why? Why is that? Well, how do you get an? How do you uh, acquire a retirement fund if you're not paid enough? How do you save? How do you save retirement money in your nest egg if you if there's no surplus cash to save? If you're living from paycheck to paycheck. If your rent possible. is so high and your utilities are so high yeah. and your uh, your groceries are so high and then you have medical bills, how do you save for your retirement? You don't, but it's a good argument point from their stupid point of view. Well, it's an excuse to trivialize you know? the need for Social Security. The reason Social Security... Which is not an entitlement, by the way. Came into being. It's not an entitlement. The reason Social Security came into being was because we had a lot of elderly people starving to death back in the 30s. Mm -hmm. And not just because of the depression. And FDR... It was just a regular thing. And FDR had a heart. Yeah. So Social Security was supposed to be their income. Their total right. income. Because they didn't have a retirement account or fund. Okay. Well, I was speaking to uh, Mr. Martin Drummond on the phone. We had a very long conversation. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will be doing a very, very hard-hitting show in the near future because he has some life experiences. Uh, he lived in the Middle East with his dad for a certain period of time, and he witnessed some very important things, and he would like to share them with me. But I want to say hi, hi, hello, greetings. To Mr. Martin Drummond of uh, Kentucky, he is one of the few uh, intelligent, uh, progressive, liberal people from the state of Kentucky. He is surrounded by crazy, red state, right wing, redneck, religious nuts, whatever you want to call them, fundamentalists, uh, evangelicals. He's surrounded by these demons. We call them nuts. Nuts. Yeah, religious nuts. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. Anyway, do. greetings to Martin Drummond, Bulldog Drummond. Bulldog. And um, also, I want to say hello to my very near dear friend uh, from Osaka, Japan, Miho, who is now experiencing a typhoon. I hope you and your aunt your, and, your, and your loved ones seek shelter immediately. And uh, please let me know when you are safe. <coughs> Didn't they just have one in Okinawa? Maybe it's maybe it's the same one. Yeah, maybe. maybe it traveled north Ugh. to Osaki. I don't know. Osaka. But uh, yes. Um, but anyway, uh, you want to sink? You ready to sink the teeth? We oh. will now sink our teeth into these readings for this week's uncensored hard-hitting truth sink them babies sending heavier vehicles and eventually humans to Mars requires first testing new technologies to see if they work I like to send the Republican Congress to Mars but it's not feasible to conduct experiments on the red planet so, to mimic Mars's low-density atmosphere, NASA sent a saucer-like test vehicle high above the Earth. Mm -hmm. NASA engineers announced on Friday that the June mission's main objective was met. The vehicle, 
called the low density supersonic decelerator flew to 190,000 feet at greater than four times the speed of sound wow. and simulated Martian landing conditions. The vehicle did an amazing job of getting to the right speed and altitude. The experimental flight, which cost about $150 million, and was conducted from the Navy's Pacific Missile Range facility on Kauai, Hawaii, yeah. was intended as a dry run for two more tests next year. One of the technologies NASA engineers tested is an inflatable donut-shaped ring around the edge of the saucer-like vehicle that deploys like a puffer fish in a third of a second, slowing the vehicle. In the test run, the saucer went from traveling at Mach 4.3, greater than four times the speed of sound, to a breezy Mach 2. making the inflatable device a success. The second technology is a hundred foot wide parachute. Parachute? Space? Which virtually disintegrated the moment it was released. In the months ahead, NASA will try to figure out how to properly deploy the parachute. I guess it didn't deploy properly or whatever. <laughs> the idea of taking 200 pounds of Kevlar and nylon and deploying it at 2,500 miles per hour, 200 pounds that inflated would be the size of a small warehouse, is certainly a challenging endeavor. There's a lot of physics with this problem that we are now gaining new insights into that we've never had before. And we're going to take all that knowledge and feed it toward our flights next year. So well, I guess we're going to Mars. Well, there's a lot to be learned from Mars. And uh, if... Uh, the United States uh, finds out there's tons of then you can uh, kiss Mars's the beauty of Mars goodbye because they will go over there and, and mine Mars and have I don't think so because build mining, I believe mining colonies yeah I believe I read or whatever that the Russians are going to colonize the moon now, who landed there first in 1969? And planted the flag? And planted the flag. Supposedly? The United States? Uh -huh. Was that Neil Armstrong? Uh huh. Buzz Aldrin? So, uh, are we going to lose that uh, land now? Usually, when you claim something and stick your flag in it. Uh huh. But they never, they never said we claimed, we, we, we formally claimed the moon. Uh -huh. uh, uh, for the United States. And they didn't get a deed. The Republicans love deeds. They like deeds. Yeah, they never had a deed made up. Yeah. There's no deed yet. So. Oh well, their loss. Yeah. Remember that uh, television program with uh, the big actor in 1999? Space 1999? Yeah. Where they did have a colony on the moon? Yeah. Well, uh, did they ever? Did they find Alice Cramden when they were up no. there? Get it? I'll send you. You're going to the moon, Alice. How oh, zoom? Bang zoom. No, but uh, I mean, does this mean that if Russia has a deed uh, made up, that um, 
that the uh, that Russia will will charge the nations of the world for 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 the uh, income for high tide and low tide and. Uh, yeah, and, that and, would be and, nice, huh? And romantic moonlight. No, nah, they wouldn't do it, but Republicans would do it. Oh. oh yeah. Republican American politicians would charge people for for a romantic. We'll cut off your moonlight. We'll cut your moonlight off. <laughs> be like shutting a nightlight off. We'll cut off your moonlight, and we're, we are charging you for high tide and low tide. Exactly. And you cannot write any songs with the word moon in it without paying us. There you go. Copyright. Copyright the moon. That's what that's oh, what Americans would that's what yeah. American conservatives would do. Big corporations would love that. Yeah. Intellect my intellectual property. A moon. You couldn't even if you wanted to show your bare ass to somebody, you couldn't call it a moon. Mooning. No mooning. You have to pay a royalty. A, that's correct. A fee. There you go. A fee. Everything's a fee. A fee. A fee. A fee. That's a fee. Right. Now you're talking like a good American. Yeah, like a good scumbag Republican. A bug. Yeah. Can turn you into a vegetarian. Okay. Or at least make you swear off red meat. Really? Doctors across the nation are seeing a surge of sudden meat allergies in people bitten by a certain kind of tick. Really? Those damn ticks again. This bizarre problem was only discovered a few years ago, but is growing as the ticks spread from the southwest and the east to more parts of the United States. In some cases, eating a burger or a steak has landed people in the hospital with severe allergic reactions. I thought ticks were also responsible for time itself, you know, as in tick, tick tock, tick, tick tock. That was cheesy, right? Few patients seem aware of the risk, and even doctors are slow to recognize it. As one allergist who has seen 200 cases on New York's Long Island said, why would someone think they're allergic to meat when they've been eating it their whole life? Yes. The culprit is the Lone Star Tick. The Lone Star Tick? Yeah, blame it on Texas again. Why not? Named for Texas. Why not? Everything negative seems to be coming from that state anyway. A state famous for meaty barbecue. Well, the beef industry would not be happy about this tick because, you know, remember, beef, real food for real people. Remember that commercial? Where's the beef? That, yeah, well, that was the old lady. I think she, I think she assumed room temperature. Yeah, she did. But uh, no, you remember the commercial? Real food for real people. The tick is now found throughout the South and the eastern half of the United States. Uh-oh. Researchers think some other types of ticks also might cause meat allergies. Cases have been reported in Australia, France, Germany, Sweden, Spain, Japan, and Korea. Here's how it happened. The bugs harbor a sugar that humans don't have called alpha-gal. Alpha what? Gal. G-A-L. Like your gal pal. Gal pal. Gal pal. The sugar is found also in red meat, beef, pork, venison, rabbit, and even in dairy products. It's usually fine when people encounter it through food that gets digested. But a tick bite triggers an immune system response and in that high alert state the body perceives the sugar the tick transmitted to the victim's bloodstream and skin as a foreign substance. 
and makes antibodies to it. Uh -huh. That sets the stage for an allergic reaction the next time the person eats red meat and encounters the sugar. It happened last summer to Louis Danzig, a 63-year-old retired nurse from Montauk on eastern Long Island. Hours after eating a burger, I woke up with a very swollen hands that were on fire from itching. She headed downstairs. I could feel my lips and tongue were going, getting swollen. Uh-oh. And by the time I made it to the phone for help, calling for help, I was losing my ability to speak. Yeah. And my airway was closing. Uh-oh. An athletic shock. Usually, would, would, uh, before you get to the doctor, would Benadryl, I guess Benadryl would help. Benadryl, yeah. She Those. had had a recent tick bite. Oh. And a blood test confirmed the meat allergy. I'll never have another hamburger, she said. I definitely do not want to have that happen to me again. Definitely stay out of the, uh, do, do not walk through the local vegetation, you know, where the ticks uh, um, live, waiting for you, you know. In Mount Juliet, near Nashville, Tennessee, a 71-year-old Georgia Slimmons went to a steakhouse on June the 1st. Is Georgia uh, a, a, a heavy woman or was she slim? Actually it's Georgette, excuse me. Or was Georgette Slimmins? Slim. Was Georgette Slimmins slim, slim or was she obese? She went to a friend's birthday and had a steak. Good friend, eh? Served steak instead of, instead of cake. I only had a, I only had a friend or a relative serve me steak Maybe a couple times in my life. Yeah. I used to have a T-bone every Saturday night. Oh, that's when, when grocery prices were reasonable. I used to have a friend uh, in Hackysack ah. who owned a liquor store. Yeah. And uh, he invited me every Saturday night to come to his place and have a T-bone. I mean, uh, unconditional invitation? I mean, he didn't try to... No, he was a friend. He was a friend, okay. He just happened to have a connection, a meat connection. Well, you like T-bones, I guess. Well, he, well he, he, but he could. He had enough to eat every Saturday and to have you over. Yeah. That's what I mean. Sometimes we also had liver. Gee, what a... I remember one time we had Franks and beans, too. What? What a switch from a T-bone steak <laughs> to liver or franks and beans. Oh my God. About 4.30 in the morning, I woke up. My body was on fire. I was itching all over and I broke out in hives. Nothing like that had ever happened to me before. Should have played the song by Johnny Cash, Ring of Fire. A few weeks later, for a brother's birthday, she ordered another steak. Hours later, she woke almost hysterical with a, a, a constricted throat, in addition to hives and a burning sensation. When did she go to the doctor with all these, uh, with all this symptoms. suffering and symptoms? Yeah. She hasn't gone to the doctor yet? At the University of Virginia in Charlottesville, I see two or three cases every week, said Dr. Scott Cummins. Good thing his name is not Dick Cummins. Who with a... Who with a colleague, Dr. Thomas Platts Mills, published the first paper tying the tick to the illness in 2011. Dr. Aaron McGinty. Mm -hmm an allergy specialist on eastern Long Island, an area with many ticks, has seen nearly 200 cases over the last three years. 
at least 30 involved children. Yeah. Youngest was four or five years old. Oh, well, kids play everywhere, you know. They're... She is keeping a database to study the illness with other researchers. It is bizarre, she said. It goes against almost anything I've ever learned as an allergist. Because the symptoms can occur as long as eight hours after eating meat. Rather than immediately. Really? And the culprit is sugar. A type of carbohydrate. Whereas most food allergies are caused by... Proteins! And allergic reactions can be treated with antihistamines. Yeah, like the one I mentioned before, Benadryl. Or quercetin and vitamin C together. Or the they work very well. Or a good homeopathic allergy formula like I'm using. That could help too. That I forgot to take before I left. The antihistamines will ease the itching and more severe ones with epinephrine. I'm currently taking uh, a formula by uh, a botanical choice. It was, uh, uh, Dr. Billy over here turned me on to it. Doctors don't know if the allergy is permanent. Some patients show signs of declining antibodies over time. Although those with severe reactions are understandably reluctant to risk eating meat again. Even poultry products, such as turkey sausage. I hate that. Sometimes contain meat byproducts and can trigger the allergy. I want real sausage made from pork. The meat allergy does not seem to be lifelong. But the caveat is... Oh, is it beluga caveat? Boy, the levity bells have seen a lot of action today. This week. Go ahead. Additional tick bites bring it back. <laughs> Beluga caveat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, my god! Gotta love him. Gotta oh, totally ouch! Uh huh. I accidentally cocked myself between the legs with my shillelagh. Between? Oh! The handle, it went whip me. Uh -huh. Holy crap. Karma. Caramel? Karma. Oh, karma. I hate people that say caramel. It's caramel, you goofballs. Or you food foodie snobs say caramel. Caramel, my balls. Hey, 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 hey. Which happened to get hit this accidentally. Is not, this is not the Ruth Heimer uh, show. This is uncensored, hard-hitting truth. Uncensored. Um, um, caveat, yeah. So anyway, go ahead. All right, a little change of pace. I had another joke, but I, I slipped my mind. Change of pace. Tomato paste? A Dear Abby. Better be good. We seem to do so well with Dear Abby's. Yeah, because so many ridiculous people write to her. That's for sure. So it, it is. It sparks comedy in our you show. You know, it's a wonder that these ridiculous people can even pick up a pen and write. Well, the, the amazing thing is that w they would want to waste yeah. this woman's time with their re their abs absurd uh, uh, problems that are that are very solvable if you have common sense. All right. Uh, Coming out of an abusive relationship in the past, I made some poor decisions. I moved away from home and into pornography and prostitution. Ah, this is an interesting story. By the way, speaking of prostitution, uh, the great New Jersey cops and etc. just closed down two more massage parlors. Oh, what were they doing? Giving happy endings to clients? Yes. They were jerking yes, them off? Were. Yes, they were. Oh, well, that is such a terrible thing. That, that, that would really drive our society in New Jersey down. Was it Bergen County? Passaic County? Absolutely. 
Bergen County's uh, very like hoity-toity, you know, nose up in the air, snooty. You know, oh, we can't have this. You do. Cannot have Me this. Meanwhile, the public is not exposed to it. Well, we can have uh, the uh, Pentagon overpaying for all kinds of crap, but we certainly can't have people jerking each other off. And 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 you can you can for send, moolah. And you could send young people to die. Uh, 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 so uh, old. A, a greedy, miserable, a corrupt, evil, uh, 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 elitist geezers from Washington can make even more money. Uh -huh. You know, or their friends in corporations, or their actual corporation themselves, with Mr. Dick Cheney yeah. and Halliburton, and KBR, yeah. etc. Yeah, war profiteering. Yes. Oh, but that, but, but, but that's not that's not obscenity. That's not obscene. No, no. Oh no, but but some. But so, but uh, uh, men uh, are getting uh, masturbated, getting yes. jerked off af after they get a massage. Terrible. It's 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 horrible. We can't have that. That's correct. That's correct. You know, and 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 the rich not paying taxes, but the middle class Ooh. paying most of the taxes. Well, that's okay. That's that's fine. all right too. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Priorities really really makes a lot of sense in America. Mm -hmm. Continuing, I come from a small town. And it became a big deal when it hit the internet. Yeah, you see, you see, sometimes these readings, these trivial readings, spark fascinating discussions. Sometimes. All right, the internet, explain about this. Everyone in my generation back home knew what I did. Okay. Years later, I am back home. I have a wonderful husband, and we are expecting our first child, a girl. But, yeah. My husband loves and accepts me in spite of my past, and my mother has become my best friend. That's rare, though, that a, that a, that a, a hooker change her life completely around and then live a straight lace, straight edge lifestyle like that completely yeah. to complete turnaround that, that's rare well you know like in the old days hookers became nuns really yeah they in other way and, and if they didn't become nuns they, they became their worst uh, 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 obscenity you know people yeah. always go for the extreme yeah exactly yeah. they 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 it's always fanaticism and going to the extreme that humans tend to uh, lean towards. Yeah. It's never a life of moderation. And my, oh, I love my life here. Nowhere else feels like home, but I'm worried that my child's life could be miserable here because of my past. That could happen. Oh yeah, that could happen, sure. She will go to school with the children of people who know my history. And they will torment the child. They will never forgive the mother. Okay? And, and the kids will be cruel and, and say to this girl, your mommy's a whore, your mommy's a whore, your mommy's a whore, your mommy's a whore. I, I, I already know what's going to happen. No parent would want their child around me. Yes. And by extension, my daughter. She won't be able to hang out with any of the other people from school, the kids. She may also learn the unsavory things that I did. Uh, why? People know about that too? Yes, they know about her past. Unsavory? I'm torn between moving away for her sake or staying. Oh, so this common knowledge is in this, within this region this only. Town, yes. The kid's going to go through hell, really. Innocent child, you know. My parents are aging and have no one else to care for them. They can't follow me, but say I should do what is best for the baby. Mm. I hate the idea of deserting my parents when they need me, but I also hate that my child will be ostracized. Can you help? It's a tough question. It's tough, very tough, because you have the, your loved ones on both sides of you. You 
you got your parents, which would be heartbreaking to abandon them, and then you have your child that will be tormented, innocent child tormented. So it's that's a tough question. Uh, I mean, uh, problem to solve. For your child's sake, I think you should relocate. As I'm sure you have already realized, people can be cruel. Oh boy. And right. they love to talk. Yeah. Humans can be cruel at any age. When children overhear what is said over the back fence, they can be cruel too. And I'd rather your daughter wasn't subjected to it. This is not to imply that wherever you go, you might not encounter someone who recognizes you, but the chances are less. You don't have to move right away. Take your time. Scout out locations. Arrangements can be made for care if your parents need it. But your daughter's welfare must come first. Yeah, well parents should, should not be abandoned either. When you go to the store. Yeah. For milk and eggs. Me or the, or, or, or the, or the reading? The reading. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it applies to you too. Oh, okay, go ahead. There is a sell-by date on the package. Yes. Perishable. Sure. How long after that date is it safe to use that? Well, you know what? Uh, I was talking to my sister about this and she has a job involved with pharmaceuticals. A little bit. And, you know, usually a an expiration date on drugs and, and, and nutritional supplements it's not like written in stone. It's not like it, there's there's a kind of a grace period after the expiration date where the product is still going to be effective. Hmm. You know, so it's not like okay, tomorrow it will expire, therefore I should throw it away. Hmm. No, that's not the case. According to eatbydate.com <laughs> When it comes to milk, pay attention. The length of time it lasts beyond the expiration date on the carton depends on what kind of milk it is and the temperature in your refrigerator. Lactose free and non fat milk last another seven to ten days. Oh, yeah, because fats have a tendency to become rancid. Skim and reduced fat milk one week. Milk doesn't last that long in my house. Whole milk should last five to seven days. Just use the damn product already and stop eating and drinking like a little canary. Consume it. Of course. For this to happen, the milk must be stored properly. Yeah, you have to have a real cold refrigerator at temperature at or below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. That's true. Well, well, 32 degrees Fahrenheit is the freezing point. Yeah, you wouldn't want to do that when you're refrigerated. Because no. everything you took out would be frozen. Yeah, you, you, well, you could, you could go into the upper 30s. You can get into the upper 30s. The Academy of Nutrition and Dietetic states that eggs should be refrigerated at the time you buy them and as soon as possible upon your return at home and can be used up to three weeks after the sell-by date. Eggs, if don't, eggs don't last long in my house either. They yeah. have been stored properly. Well, um... Well, eggs, eggs do not become 
rancid at room temperature like dairy products do. But you should refrigerate your eggs. Well, that's what they said, but you can still also use them three weeks after the sell-by date. They're still good. Exactly. <laughs> and when you use them, you will be in ecstasy. Use them or lose them, baby. Yes. When it comes to preventing the spread of germs, maybe the president is on to something with his fondness for fist bumps. Excuse me? Fist bumps. Bumps. Instead of shaking hands. The familiar knocking of knuckles spreads only one twentieth the amount of bacteria that a handshake does. Yeah, but try to do that with uh, foreign prime ministers and you can't be... <laughs> That's better than a high five, which still passes a lot the amount as a handshake. You can't... In certain, in certain so social circles you can't be high-fiving and fist-pumping people. But then you should wear gloves, my friend. That's not a bad idea. Thank you. White gloves and a, and a black top hat, like the Monopoly man, with or without the monocle. So, fist bumps, popularized by Barack Obama and others, seem to be the wisest greeting. As long as you don't you use crotch bumps. Especially <laughs> during cold and flu season. Oh, yes. The importance of hand hygiene is nothing new in medicine. But the researchers realized that while a lot of research focused on hands getting germy from touching doorknobs and other surfaces, only a few studies had looked at handshakes. And there are alternatives to handshakes. You see them on television all the time. The fist bump! And high five! Mr. Whitworth and Sarah Mellon shook hands, fist bumped, high fived each other dozens of times for the research. Elbow, One. Elbow bumping. Well, that's even better. Flip side, <laughs> flip side, high five. <laughs> One wore a glove covered in bacteria. Yeah. While the other had a clean, sterilized glove. After each greeting, they measured how much bacteria had been transferred. Their results were published online today in the American Journal of Infection and Control. What makes the fist bump more sanitary? Mostly it's the smaller amount of surface area in contact between the two hands. The researcher did practice runs with paint to measure how much surface area each form of greeting involved. It's a novel study, though the results are not surprising, said Mary Lou Manning. President-elect of the Association for Professionals in Infection Control and Epidem Epidemiology. Epidemiology. She said she hasn't seen much fist bumping or high-fiving in hospitals. Well, if you got those porno nurses in a hospital, you'll see it. A you'll lot, see a, a lot more. Bump, you'll see a lot more bumping. Handshakes are more common, um, and but they must be followed by good hand wash. Uh, yeah, and don't touch uh, your mouth. Don't rub your and eyes, your eyes, nose, and nose. mouth. Orifices, orifices, orify, orify. <laughs> she said. He hopes the norm changes in a hospital. You really don't want people to shake hands. It's an unnecessary risk. Now, speaking of germs, will there be any readings today concerning uh, the uh, recent Ebola epidemic? 
or the uh, chimichanga virus from that Caribbean mosquito? Anything come up? Because it's very... I go from top to bottom. It's very headline. Well, I figure you, your Newest memory... Newest to oldest. Oh, my nudge. I figure your memory might recall coming across something that important. I don't think the uh, Ebola is that important. Uh, yeah, well, excuse me? Excuse me, it's two people in the United States of America who are isolated. You know what? Uh, That's 315 million people. But, it, but, I hear, but, it, but I hear it might be transmitted a a by aerosol, by vapor. Is a possibility. They are isolated at Emory University Hospital in Atlanta. So there's not a hell of a lot to say is what you're trying to tell me. If you're going to talk about Africa, there certainly is, but not America. Right. Well, yeah. I, I think that uh, that new virus from the, the mos mosquitoes that's up here now, the Caribbean, uh, 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 aside from West Nile, which appeared, yeah, has appeared, is pretty important compared to other things. You know, we're talking about infectious diseases, viruses, contagious you know, transmitted uh, very easily and quickly uh, by well, a... Well, we were just talking about bacteria on your hands. By, by a new mosquito... What's the difference? ...that is more ravenous than the typical mosquito that we have in the Northeast. Correct. And but how I've many seen, people are going to be affected? We don't know yet. Well, there you go. Okay, so... And until we know, and until it becomes a problem, so, so to speak, you know... Then well, we'll have I'm, to do I'm glad I brought it up anyway, because I think it should be brought up. So now we well, yeah, understand. Ebola should be stopped in Africa, so that it doesn't spread right. elsewhere. Well, how come? Uh, is that why the uh, the very few infected uh, Ebola positive Americans that are in quarantine now are in isolation? Is that why uh, some of them are are responding very well? to proper treatment in the United States? No, there is no treatment per se, but these two people, these were e evangelists, they were working. Like a, mi and a missionary, mi like a missionary. missionary. So in other words, and they, Ebola has not been studied by Western medicine that much. No, I would say no. That's why they don't. But they are taking a experimental serum which seems to be working, but as for a treatment per se, they don't have they one. Don't have one. Same they thing. just got to keep the body going. The same thing with the new virus from, from uh, mosquito transmission from the Caribbean. They don't have a vaccine for that, but so they don't, they don't really know enough about it. And uh, you're not going to know enough about these type, types of things when you depend on private big farmers to uh, do your research and development. You see... It ain't gonna happen unless they're paid. The reason why I brought up Ebola, aside from the fact it's a devastating, nasty, nasty disease, is the fact that Monsanto wants to control the treatment there you go. of Ebola, if it ever... If you get one. ...comes to the United States, you know, Monsanto like, it becomes like a problem. Treatment. Isn't that isn't that co a coincidence that Monsanto wants to control the I treatment? They like to control everything. Boy, they just don't have enough money, Monsanto, do that's they? Correct. Well, you see, that's why big corporations must be defined with proper taxation, because when these things get too big, you see, they want to take over the world. Now, tell me if you think I'm wrong about this, but I read an article recently that because of the drought taking place in the um, American West, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, CEO, the CEO of Nestle's uh -huh. is uh, draining the uh, aquifers Aquifer, underneath, yes. from underneath the Colorado River? Yes. He, he is, he is taking uh, possession What is the of name of that brand water he sells? Denison or? Den Dasani? D Dasani. That's owned by Nestle's? Yeah! Hey, people out there, boycott Dasani drinking water. It's owned by Nestle's, the evil Nestle 
that wants to control the drinking water supply of the entire planet Earth. Do not buy Dasani water. They are a uh, um, inductee into this week's Chiseler's Hall of Shame, which includes the CEO of Nestle's, and uh, I have inducted others into the CEO. I mean, into the uh, Chiseler's Hall of Shame shit. when I, you know, when I do the show with William H. Morris very soon, which I think is coming up. And Nestle's, by the way, is a Swiss company. It's not American per se. So the CEO is not American. Oh, I don't know about that. What's his name again? I, 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 I don't knew know. his last name. Al Douchebag? Close. Well, they're all douchebags. With no cigar. You know? They're all scumbags. I don't I don't feel they should they should have the respect to memorize their names. It's bad enough we have we know the well, names. Well, it is if you want to put it on a uh, crime report. Yeah, I know. Sure. You know? And, and it's bad enough we we know the names of the uh, Republican con congressional troublemakers. Uh, do you think it's possible? They were all up there last night on Facebook, you know, who voted for these uh, uh, particular bill that just was uh, through to not stop corporations from moving out so they won't have to pay their taxes and etc. They want to continue. And one of your friends on your thingy there defended that. Well, I haven't read the bill. Guess what, pal? Neither did they. I have to double the check. The ones who voted on it. I, 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 got, I got to bitch slap this person around. I got to go by. On, it's on Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth Facebook group, right? No, it's on my post. Oh, so it's on my page. Oh, I don't know. So it's probably, you know. know. I just assume I just assume that members of the group proactively get involved and post things on the group, but the, the, only only a handful of people are proactive on my groups. You know, which is part of the problem. But uh do you think it's possible for a um a international or or United Nations tribunal to bring the uh, Republicans in Washington up on charges of crimes against humanity for for being responsible for global warming and all these other uh, earthly the uh, UN disasters. Has, the UN has never been allowed to live up to its ultimate job. Like war crimes, like like Bush Cheney, they like, tried. like G. W. Bush, Dick Cheney. Barack Obama's nixed it. Two-party system, corporatism. The Hague was going to take care of that. The, uh, yeah. the World Court yeah. or whatever. And is uh, is Hillary Clinton still uh, behind Monsanto? Guess or, so. Or has she changed her mind? She's a corporatist. Two-party system. There you go. Two sides of the same coin. We're going to break now. It is time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch. Yeah, I'm going to be proactive and eat it. He's going to be proactively eating it, and I am now going to meet with our voiceover artist, William H. Morrow, to do our show, followed by our promo, our commercial, done by William H. Morrow, and, uh, and we'll be back for the balance of this show. Yeah, because they, they definitely, there's definite crimes that these Republicans can be brought up on internationally, without a doubt. Right. You know? I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I wonder, I wonder why um, a Democrat would be uh, even remotely protective of any conservative. Gee, I wonder why. Because they're corporatists. Because they they get their orders. Forget from, about Democrat and Republican. So they get their orders from a higher authority. Yeah, the higher authority is called greed. Oh, it's called uh, instead of do do uh, uh, instead of make instead of do this, I will pay you off, and you will not do that. You will do something else. Well, they don't call it a payoff. Come on. No, they don't call it bribes. They, they don't call, call it. Bribes. But they call it a, a campaign they get, contribution. They get, Alec, they get Alec to write the damn law. 
give it to the particular uh, 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 law person, and, and and then they push it through. So it's a slap in the face of the people that voted for them. That's correct. Is what it is. It's That's total correct. disrespect of the American voter that put him in office. That's correct. Okay. Nothing new there. Yeah. Okay, we're here with William H. Moore III. Uh, uh, we're having a very uh, typical dog day, summer day, uh, almost 90 degrees with high humidity. And uh, how are you feeling, sir, today? Lousy. Okay. I don't like the weather, to be honest with you. Oh, I, 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 I don't mind dry heat, but I can't stand humidity. Nope. Okay, well, we got an interesting story here um, that I thought, thought it would be worth uh, mentioning. The First Baptist Church of Royal Palm Beach, Florida had a homeless man arrested in, in their opinion for his own good for helping himself to some cookies inside the church valued at $2.25. A church felt that the hungry homeless man was arrested for his own good to teach him a lesson because he ate a, whatever the hell it was, a few cookies, $2.25. A, a stinking drop in a the bucket. They had to arrest the poor guy who's probably starving for all we Hungry. know. And this well, is and this is a pastor. This is a church. I would say let's death penalty. Let's kill him. The guy's a thief, and I'm being facetious though. Yeah. Well, let's kill him. If you're going to be that petty and arrest a guy for his own good, as they like to say, over some cookies, let's kill him. Destroy him. Then go out hunting others. Go get other people. Yeah. Go get the kids for stealing a little piece of candy or chewing gum. Let's go kill them all. Well, don't uh, doesn't the same mindset want to uh, torment and punish the uh, the poor children crossing the border over in Texas? You know, trying to trying to get away from their poverty. Why don't we just start a mass killing them? They want the, the governor of Texas wants to send the, the Texas National Guard and to the border for a bunch of kids, a bunch of poor children. Well, because the they have brown skin, is that what it is? No, but the bottom line too is this is our country and we can only take so many. When will this end? How many can we take? We've yeah. got to be honest and fair here. What are we? Is your country so bad you don't want to stay there? Yes, it is. We've got to start dealing with their governments, their own governments, that will make them want to stay. Putting pressure. They're, they're scared to be there because of the crime, the gangs, the whole bit, what have you. We can't... We're... we're we we've can't only got so much money and so much space. We can't police the whole world and we can't save Look the at whole Texas. world. But all yeah. these, these, what do you call it, gymnasiums or what have you, where they're putting all these kids into, whatever. There's only so much square footage. We're running out of room. You mean like concentration camp? No, not no, concentration No, we don't treat them like that. No. no. But the point no. is that, um, that the United States government should be putting pressure on their corrupt governments yes. to start... Uh, like people want to stay and live in peace well, a little bit. And to, start, and to start to start recognizing and, and and respecting human rights. Well, rather than have your people live in fear, yeah. they're so scared they want to get out. And they want a better yeah. life like in the United States, yeah. which is understandable. These are not bad people. These are young children, young people. Right. People that want to better their lives, understandable. Their governments don't make them want to feel wanted. They're living in fear down there. And this is no way for anyone to live. Exactly, exactly. And uh, we're getting back to this, the horrible treatment of the poor and, and homeless in America. This is a pastor, no less, with this attitude. This well, is well, incredible. Well, you right now. Don't hide behind the phrase pastor. Too many people hide behind the veil. Well, we expect him to. They, no, they hide behind the veil of the damn church. You might you know how many people I know are, are the vow Christians. I don't want it to sound corny, but go to church religiously every Sunday. And yeah. The biggest effing fakes I've ever met in my life. You could swear it's un uncensored. Uh, uh, We're you, having an uncensored but you show. You be professional. We don't do that. But they are fake. They hide behind. They go every Sunday during the week. They're scum. So just because he's a pastor, he's a man. Hey, okay, look. How many, how many, how many Catholic priests over the decades or centuries have molested young boys? And I can go into detail. Many, why is it many. Young, why is it young boys, not young women? Girls. Pedophiles. So, okay. Aside from that, so because a guy is a pastor, we're supposed to trust him. 
hey, police officers, because they're wearing a uniform. Certain officers, not the majority, the minority, have committed crimes of rape and the whole bit. As a fireman, firemen have done that too, and then firemen have been pyromaniacs, started there, fires there, there so was... they could be the first to respond to be a hero. So there, you're a human being. No matter what you do, there's going to be bad in every profession. Right. Right, yeah. and, and but it's just that the pastor is held up to a higher standard than the average person. Well, but some use the church to make money, a tax-free, tax-free income. It's all a scam. Some, a lot of, many of them it's use the church to make money as a front. You know, it's all a yeah. scam because I have a, a collar or whatever. People trust you more. Why? Why do they trust you more because you have a collar on? Because you're a man of the cloth, as they say. Why is it when they've done, done broken walls down and demolished some of these monasteries from centuries ago or decades ago? They found the skeletal remains of babe, infants, babies, meaning the nuns were probably having sex with the priests or what have you. And they had to get rid of the evidence. And you don't have you can't do that. We're not supposed to have, you know, abstinence. We're not supposed to. Well, so they you know, murdered the kid, the children. Yeah. So, right, we 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 give in to the church. We will not do this, but we'll we'll commit murder. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Do you believe in God? I would always I always tell a lot of people they get upset when I ask this. Do you believe in God? Yes, I do. Yeah. Do you think your God is proud of you right now? And I said, I want you to go home. I want you, you've heard me say this before on your show. I want you to go home tonight, look in the mirror, and in a few days or tomorrow, you call me, you tell me what looks back at you. Because I think you're an effing moron. And a I, think, I think you're a fake and a hypocrite. And a hypocrite, exactly. You know, did, you, did you know also there was a recent article where New York City police officers raided the wrong apartment and literally broke in and pulled this naked woman out of the shower well, while she was taking that, a shower? It's been a lot worse than that. Look at what a few weeks ago when they, they stormed a storm uh, and the cops busted in and threw in a uh, fire bomb or whatever they call that thing into a child's crib and the kid was severely burned in the whole bit. A four-year-old was, was recently yeah. tased by a New York City police yeah, officer. A four-year-old child. Well, we all know. What kind of a threat? Four-year-olds can knock the hell out of you. Don't tolerate a four-year-old. I'll go back to the original. Kill them. It's like a, it's like almost a police state, a fascist police state. Or worse. I mean, it must take a real tough macho man to to tase uh, young girls, young college girls, and spray them with you pepper, know, I'm, I'm unarmed, not, I'm you not know, a cop. or children. But I've gotten involved with the police when I, I walked upon street incidents, and I did more than the police did. And you know what does it? Calmness. And the guy's yelling, and the cops grabbing the guy. I said, oh. I said, Oz, relax. Settle down. If they keep on squirming Take and it, fighting. When the cops come out of that yelling, bah, 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 get down, get down, man, man. That, that invokes. Talk to them. And you know, everyone, I swear to God, this is no exaggeration. Yeah. After everything settled down, I said, you were so nice. You're talking about the SWAT teams. No, both, both sides. Even the cops shook my hand and the guys, the culprit or whatever you want to call them. I said, you were so nice. You called me right down. I said, ah, it's nothing, nothing. Why do you think when I was in college, I was always the one everybody called, I want Billy, I want Billy. Guys I didn't even know, when they were sitting on a ledge wanting to commit suicide, asked for me, and I'd be in the student union building and everybody come running up, blah, 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 so it was on the ledge, you must only, you only talk to you. I went, and I, I know it sounds braggish, I don't mean this, I never lost one. Yeah. I went out there on the ledge with you, and I said, whoa, we're kind of high up here. I mean, we're not talking like like a Empire State Building. Well, if you keep, if you're talking three, four, five stories. If you keep your composure and and, just and you talk calm their mind down. and you talk in an intelligent, uh, uh, non-offensive way, things will there won't be any trouble. But but the, but, but to but to to subdue and arrest. Uh, uh, children uh, and women unarmed and 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 old people old people that that are that but might I, be giving you. A, I have noticed a most shot of this footage yeah. a lot. Most of these people, the majority I've seen in film footage, whatever, 
They don't know how to communicate or negotiate. They don't know how to calm somebody down. I would have done it entirely different. And I'm not a, a police officer, but I do have experience in yeah. dealing with people. I mean, if you're and, gonna uh, if you're gonna pepper mace somebody, it's usually used when the other person is giving you a real hard time. If you you know to pepper mace, you don't just like for instance the Occupy Wall Street the the college girls that were sitting on 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 the on the lawn, and the cop just went back and forth just like because he felt like it uh, macing them in the face well, I think he lost his job for that too though unarmed girls he young lost, girls he lost his job over that but I, I have to investigate this four-year-old child that was I mean that that's really sick four years old that's 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 like a toddler almost it, that, no that is a toddler yeah <laughs> four years old well five years old they go to kindergarten so you might as well say they're an older toddler it doesn't matter at that age oh what threat fair yeah here. what threat come on this kid's gonna beat you up with a gun i don't and, think so and even a grown woman in a shower naked as a jaybird pulling her out of the shower oh you're a big tough macho well cop. also you know we discussed the other day i don't believe in killing these guys or shooting them when they come out with a knife Aren't you trained in martial arts and how to disarm a guy with a knife? A gun is different because that can be shot. Yeah, but can't they pop him in the lake? But with a knife, yeah. can't you disarm somehow? Uh, you're right. Can't you shoot the guy rather than kill? In the leg? For the leg. To, to uh, well, what's the phrase? Not disarm, but to, uh, uh, to um, you know what I'm trying to say. Subdue or, or stop, use, him, stop him from doing what he's doing. Isn't there something called rubber bullets? Yeah. A gun that shoots rubber bullets? Okay, so you have a lot of alternative non-lethal weapons at your disposal as law enforcement officers. I watched the video of a, a, ma a man, American man, who was struggling and he must have been strung out on drugs, uh, a, a young man. I watched him being tased so many times by the cops that he died. Phase. That he died. It didn't phase him, but it affected his heart, the electricity. Yeah, yeah so eventually he died. Sure. Now, what, what about getting some uh, having enough cops subdue him and handcuffing him uh once they're handcuffed and they're on the ground i don't see any any i don't see a threat being posed here did they have to tease well, him the bottom, so many the times line is sadly too many die unnecessarily it's not it's overreaction and too many die unnecessarily yeah and uh you have you you have options and alternatives Exactly. We overreact too fast. And, uh, well, well that, that guy, I forget his name, Mr. Bell, I believe it was, a young man, years ago when he was engaged, I think it was a day of the day of the night before his wedding. 50 plus shots fired at him, and he was unarmed. <laughs> Please. Talk about overkill, unnecessary kill. He's unarmed, and over 50 plus plus shots were fired at the shark man. And this has nothing to do with race. Well, maybe it does what they did. But the bottom line, it doesn't matter what you are. Black, white, purple, green, yellow, red. I don't care what you are. Your bottom line is you're a human being. Okay, the guy is unarmed, and over 50 plus shots were fired at you. Yes, he died. Of course, Obviously, uh, overkill. Of course. So, uh, but, but there seems to be a lack of empathy and compassion for the poor in America today. You know that North Carolina, it's illegal to be homeless. They arrest you as a vagrant instead of instead of put you find you a, a shelter they just put you in jail and how do you get out you can't afford bail obviously no you got then you stay there and then when you for get how long is that legal for how long i don't know and, and they they probably put you put put you to work in some privatized prison but once you get out you're still poor and homeless aren't you still broke when you get out of jail yeah what's their starting kit so where do, probably twenty dollars so where they go they go yeah. back to the park bench again then they get arrested again yeah. for vagrants and they go back in jail again yeah. it's wrong I I mean, the thing is, there's nobody solving problems. You're punishing me for going through hard times. Right. You're broke. That's, that makes a lot of sense. Because they blame... We'll go back to how we began. They kill, kill them. them. Yeah. Kill them. Because if you're, if you're poor and broke, our today's society blames you.
you anything out of the norm kill them they're blaming the person for being poor and broken home do they know the circumstances for why you're broken home they don't even everybody ask everybody has a different story don't they hey look what i'm on jimmy what i'm going through i've, I've had everything i had i had a lot as you know stolen embezzled from me. stolen and so do you know my story don't criticize me and and, and they they're so quick to criticize they're so quick to criticize and accuse and arrest without hearing the circumstances. That's right. We are as a human being, we, as a species, we're <laughs> overly quick to judge. Yeah, overly quick to judge. Okay, uh, <coughs> let's see, anything Sorry. else in the news? Uh, well, we can discuss that next time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, oh. yes. One more thing I want to bring up. Okay, uh, I want to first add the First Baptist Church of Royal Palm Beach, Florida to uh, our um, uh, Chisler's Hall of Shame. They're, they're one of our inductees. And I would also like to add the Safeway chain of supermarkets to the Chisler's Hall of Shame because even though Safeway now carries um, labeled organic food, they refuse to let their customers know on their label if the food is genetically modified or not and people have a right to know what they're putting in their body by, by posting truth in labeling on the label so uh, that's it that those are two of our I'm sure there will be more um, inductees but those are off the bat two inductees into the Chisler's Hall of Shame uh, of course the First Baptist Church of Royal Palm Beach Florida had the homeless man arrested for eating some cookies and it was his own and it, it was for his own good uh, two dollars and twenty five cents worth of cookies as a recap and then Safeway William H. Moore the third thank you as All always right, everybody have a good one bye bye hi this is William H. Morrow the best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to newsletter censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living in the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we are back. Thank you as always. Our voiceover artist, William H. Morrow III, for a very invigorating show, to say the least. Um, if I remember, I will next week, myself and William Morrow are going to discuss um, how... Uh, the utility companies have their sneaky ways of ripping people off, like PSE and G. You know where they are over. They'll over. They they'll estimate your bill without being exact, according to the uh, the meter. They'll estimate the bill and they'll overcharge people a little here, a little there, a little here, a little, here, a little there. Multiply it times thousands or millions of households. And they're swindling people by, you know, hoping that you won't investigate it and file a complaint. You know, playing that numbers game. Yep. Same, same thing with the uh, Social Security, uh, uh, disability, SSI, welfare, caseworkers. You know, they'll they'll turn everybody down the first time, hoping that most people will not will not appeal it mm -hmm. or fight it. And in the case of utilities. They'll overcharge those. You know, so let's just play a little on the juice harp. Oh, 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 oh,
trusty Jews are, made in Italy. I had it since the 1980s. All right. Oh, yeah, there's definitely something flying around there. Something, uh, I don't know if the, the, the mold spores are high or yeah. the pollen count is high. Or Bally's high. Bally high. Or, Bally high. Or high karate. Bally high. Hi. Remember the, that commercial? The high karate. I put high karate pops on. When you were a young, when, when you I were a young, youngster, a youngster. Yeah. Oh man. Well, I want to say greetings to my good friend uh, and uh, master, a personal trainer extraordinaire in Southern California, Mr. Rick Brown, Mr. Slick Rick Brown. Slick Rick, baby. I say greetings to you and uh, your organization that you belong to called Steel, Stone and Sugar, now uh, traveling nationwide, doing your uh, seminar workshops, teaching people how to properly use the mace, which is an ancient exercise tool. So hello and greetings to Rick Brown. And uh, just look up Steel, Stone and Sugar and uh, see where they're going to be next. You know, maybe you would want to attend their seminar. And, uh, and also uh, saying hello to uh, Strong Woman uh, and uh, I didn't realize she lived in New Jersey, uh, a, a, a Dutch woman uh, that is very athletic and very powerful by the name of um, uh, Dina uh, Ergard. Ergard, yes, Dina Ergard. I send you greetings also. Um, she's like, she's much stronger than Xena warrior princess. Ooh. She's like a, a, a Viking warrior. She's a, she's a uh, very strong kettlebell power lifter. Mm. So anyway, um, tell us about it. So, um, and of course, all of our inductees into the Chisler's Hall of Shame, you're all very welcome to be there and be shamed. <laughs> um, I'm sure their bank accounts take care of that. They're not too shamed. No, because they're making they're money. Like, uh, they're like sociopaths. They they have no remorse for their ill-gotten gains, mm -hmm. like Republicans. Yeah. And and corporate American CEOs. There's no feeling of remorse for what they do yeah for making their because they're missing oxytocin as they're i say often. they're 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 uh, they're dirty money acquiring their dirty money well oxytocin is almost like giving them an excuse or trivializing what they do it's like no. having pity on them they're, no they're evil they're not entitled to pity at, at in any shape but what if they get a a shot of it and it changes their personality. You know, like that woman, what, uh, Doris Rapp or something? Well, they better make restitution for every, all the people they hurt. Where she put, uh, 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 you know, took uh, sugars and put decent food in prisons and it altered the prisoner's behavior. She actually, you know? was a placebo or she actually gave them something? She gave them decent food! I thought prisoners ate, what, ate pretty good. What? White flour, sugar, etc. That's et what they give them? Of course. The same thing be they, they give hospital people. Oh my God. The same shit they gave Native Americans when, uh, you know, they realized that uh, they had a problem with poverty uh, in, the, in the reservations. And the government sent them this, their typical government ration. Yeah, I think it was white, white flour, lard, and, and pork, maybe something like that. Oh, a lot of sugar. <laughs> they sent them a lot of high sugared items, and they and they became severely diabetic as a result. Well, also a good like Dr. Feingold and etc. Additives and sugar and etc. alter behavior. Look, somebody, some white guy told me that. The white guy with money said to me that uh, na native indigenous people, um, they most likely they have a, uh, a problem with alcoholism 
because they they, they they spend they take their 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 welfare and they go spend it on booze now that's like saying don't give to the homeless because they're going to turn around and buy booze with it it's another example of always blaming the victim the victim is victimized okay. because it's the victim's fault according to a conservative Right. Not that they cause the victim to be the way they are. No, no, no. They never no. take the blame or responsibility no. for the victim's circumstances, right? No, it's their own fault. They're lazy or whatever. Or they're alcoholics. Yeah. Like the like the conservative pastor in Texas. They there they don't they, they don't they don't uh, they can't find a job. They're unemployed, they can't find a job. Uh, they should be allowed to starve. They should not get any money. And who put him in the position to judge? Who put Pat Robertson in a position to judge? Correct. When the Bible says very clearly, judge not, lest ye be judged also. It, it does say that. That's correct. Well, he, it says a lot of stuff that they know and believe in and, 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 and listen to. Well, he, he's a pastor. You Please. would think he would know the Bible you would think. better than us. Well, what you're if he's a not minister? better than you, but... Huh? What if he's a minister of Satan? But he's disguised as a minister of God, but it's... That's it, correct. He's, it's, it's a false... But all of them are. ...Christianity. They're counterfeit Christians. Just like all the new translations of the Bibles, which alter the originals. Well, I, I was... Tr I had a little... Uh, uh, I wasn't bucking heads with him, but I, I didn't. I didn't understand what he meant. I was talking to Ken Create about Joel Osteen, and I says uh, Joel Osteen. He's obviously a prosperity preacher, and he doesn't mention many important things that are in the Bible. Ma many scriptures he doesn't mention. Yeah. So Ken says absolutely. He, he's 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 not giving the wrong message, you know, and not giving the right message. He's he's leaving a lot of things out. He does talk about getting rich, how God wants you to get wealthy, and you know he doesn't talk about the end times. He doesn't talk about salvation. He doesn't talk about a lot of things, you know. And they also showed photos of his mansion, mm -hmm. and and I and what I said to Ken was, I wonder how much of his fortune does Joel Osteen donate to the poor and the homeless. But that's not his fortune. And he says, so Ken says... He's a socialist. Ken says, I don't know what... I'm not going to... I'm in no place to to judge Joel Osteen because I don't know what he does. I says, well, I'm not, I'm not judging Joel Osteen. You know, a lot of people misconstrue uh, basic criticism with and ju correct. judgment. I'm, I'm saying, I, prove it. It, look, if he donates a lot of money to the poor, show me. If you can't show me, that means you do not donate anything to the poor. That's not his money. What money? The money he gets. He's Joe a socialist. Osteen? He gets it from the people in his church. Doesn't he have control over that money? I don't know how much control he has over the money, but the point is... Well, how does he live in a it's mansion? It's not his money. But how does he because live Because he's paying, the church is paying for it. He's a socialist. Well, isn't doesn't that? You're not an entrepreneur. Isn't that like most conservative evangelists and, and or, or yes, evangelists in general? Yes, they all live off the church they are pastors of. They get a car. They get a house. They get it is. They get it out. Well, I, they heard, get a, I, I heard. I you heard. Know? Uh, I saw the the documentary about the uh, you know Jim Baker that was married to same thing Tammy Faye and he had the affair with. Uh, yeah, with that woman, and uh, um, it, they said, you know, during the documentary, and Jim Baker really, <laughs> really was not a, a donator of money to the poor. He was out. He was there to make big bucks. Yeah, why would he donate money to the poor? Each actually, because he's on TV churches. talking about mentioning God's name. That's why I figure he's donating money to the poor. Well, the point is, the people who in his church are donating the money to the church. So he's not a, to the pastor. So, so the evangelist, the pastor, is a spokesperson for the church, which he does not have sole control over. Is that what you're trying to tell me? 
Well, control, control. I'm talking about the money. I'm well, con about control, control and the money is synonymous. Not all. I just said the church has control of the money. Okay. He benefits from it. Right. Because so, he is the head of the church. Right. But, but it's not his money. But Olstein cannot take it upon himself to take church money, take donations, and give it to, uh, let's say, a, a, a foundation that feeds the homeless in America and give them like a several mil. They have, million. each church probably has a, uh, a part in its church that handles the poor. Just like Pat Robertson has a place yeah. Uh, what the hell the name of it is? Angels or something? And it, uh, and, and and it donates uh, uh, money and etc. to Africa. Well, okay? they all have something like that. And they don't. Pay but it's not his job. And of course, they don't pay. They whatever. don't pay taxes, and uh, which they really should now, since they stick their Pinocchio nose into politics. Uh, so yeah. So in other words, he has to uh, get approval. In order to spend the uh, the parishioners' donation money, the, uh, the fortune that is amassed in donations. Yeah, if he goes uh, spending it uh, personally, he could end up in trouble. Right. Well, some people are more obvious than others, like Peter Popoff. <laughs> He's uh, kind of like pretty obvious. You know. But the point is that all of those churches are not entrepreneurs. They are socialists. They are supported by someone else. Right. So they have no business to yak about conservative, put up the bootstrap, bootstrap uh, uh, qualities and etc. And if you can, if you're poor and you can't find a job, you should starve. That kind of stuff. Like because they are being supported by others. Okay. Like this, this schmuck over here. Just the same asshole. as welfare and food stamps, etc. Pastor John Hagee. Mr. Hagee. Or yeah. Hagee of uh, of Texas. Yeah, like him. Oh, you can't find you can't find a job. You're unemployed. It's your own fault. You should uh, you should not get any help. You should die. Starve. That's correct. Mr. Hagee does not have a grip on reality. Okay. None no, of them Mr. Haggy has that arrogant... You said before that uh, Joel Osteen, uh, uh, God wants you to be wealthy. And he said, no, God doesn't want you to be wealthy. He wants you to be content with contentment. Mm -hmm. Okay? Not wealthy. Because yeah. when you become wealthy, the wealth becomes your God. Because you will protect that at all costs. Yeah. And God wants to be first in your life. Well, and of course, of course, uh, Michelle Bachman just thinks John Hagee is right on the money. Is, is Thinking, it, you know, is one thing. Having knowledge of is another thing. Yeah. Bachman just thinks a lot, or she reads talking points, or crap that is. Fed in her ear. You mean like Ann Cunter? Like jerks. Ann the Cunt Cunter? Talking All of them. Point, talking points? All if it's of them. Even the, uh, uh, the, the, even the, 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 stu the stupid ass Sarah Palin? Talking points? They do not give thought to the things that they end up saying. They just say it. Because that others in their clique have said it. You well, the, said it. the conservative clique which includes the conservative pastors like John Hagee and the politicians, they have this arrogant American attitude that I have mine and I don't care what you have or do not have as long as I have mine. And but they wouldn't dare say that out loud. That's what they mean. Their actions. You follow their actions and yeah. that's what they mean. And that's how all those, those redneck uh, people living in, in the red states, they have the same attitude. Mm -hmm. I have mine. I don't want my tax dollars going to a bunch of lazy uh, so-and-sos. But they don't say that about the pastors, do they? Oh, they're, like I just said. They're lazy so-and-sos. They're being supported by yeah. others. Socialism. That's correct. So they and, are lazy. And it's high time they're, that they're taxed. I think so.
it's high time that the rich are taxed. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's high time, as I said before, that bond transactions and stock transactions are taxed. Okay, there's trillions of dollars there. Right now, you don't have to put up a lot of money to buy stocks. I don't know what the goddamn uh, 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 amount is today. It used to be 50% back in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s after FDR. But today, if it's a quarter percent, we're lucky. That's why all the speculation. I mean, you don't have to buy oil to speculate on it. You don't have to have a delivery. Oh, I just bought uh, 10,000 uh, gallons of oil. No, I just put a couple of dollars down and I speculate on this stuff. Hey, the price is going to go up tomorrow, it's going to go down tomorrow. I either lose or I win. But if I lose, how much money am I losing? That's what we have. Now if they had to pay a tax on every transaction, or they had to put down 50%, now that would cut speculation way down. Mm -hmm. Way down. I would like to say hello to my good friend uh, uh, and also uh, the uh, president of his own fine uh, groups, one of which is uh, called the Modern Medical uh, Quackery, hey. Mr. Uh, Robert Cheeky of Montreal, Canada. Greetings, Mr. my good friend Mr. Robert Cheeky. And uh, also my other friend from Varanasi, India, Ooh. Guy and Shankle Singh. Ooh. Greetings, Guy and Shankle Singh. Uh, from uh, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. Okay, let us sink our teeth back into these readings. A comet okay. on Wednesday, an unmanned probe, excuse me, swung alongside a comet Wednesday after a four billion mile chase through space over 10 years. Mm -hmm. Europe's Rosetta probe will orbit and study the giant lump of dust and ice as it hurtles toward the Sun. And if it all goes well, it will drop a lander onto the comet in the coming months. Mm -hmm. Rosetta turned up as planned for its rendezvous with Comet 67P dash Churyumov dash Gerasimko. Wow. Somewhere between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. The incredible trip launched March the 2nd, 2004 marks a milestone in mankind's effort to understand the mysterious shooting stars that periodically flash past Earth and have often been viewed with fear and trepidation. While the Moon, Mars, and even asteroids have been visited, no spacecraft has yet gotten so close to a comet. Having achieved this feat, Rosetta will go one step further and drop a lander on 67P's icy surface, a maneuver planned for November. You can compare what we've done so far to finding a speck of dust in a big city, said Gerhard Schwimm who was the lead scientist on the Rosetta mission until his recent retirement. To catch their quarry, scientists at the European Space Agency had to overcome a series of hurdles that included a last-minute change of destination.
the recarrier rocket failure delayed the launch. An intense hibernation period of 31 months, during which the probe was out of contact with ground stations. Before Rosetta swung alongside 67P with a final thrust on Wednesday, the spacecraft also had to accelerate to 37,000 miles per hour, a speed that required three loops around Earth and one around Mars. Underlining the achievement the European Space Agency's Director General, Jean Jacques Dordain, told scientists and spectators at the Mission Control Center, This is our only chance to have a rendezvous with a comet. Mm -hmm. Rosetta will now spend several months observing 67P, from a safe distance of up to 60 miles. This will give scientists time to find a safe place to land. Rosetta's sidekick, Philae. That maneuver will pose an unprecedented challenge because there will be no second shot. Recent pictures of 67P show that its surface is porous with Ugh. steep cliffs and house-sized boulders. One person involved with Rosetta from the start called the landing mission impossible. With only a slim chance of success. Even if the landing fails, Rosetta will remain in the comet's orbit until at least the end of 2015, gathering reams of data with its, with its 11 onboard sensors. Mm -hmm. You have that, uh, that reading about Chris Christie? I didn't say I had a reading about Mr. Chris Christie. Okay. I just said that he was vetoing a lot of crap coming up to his desk. Ah, oh, so he was showing his true colors, as usual. Yes, he was showing what a big man he is. But a big political bully, obnoxious ogre, and uh, how he's a, he's basically a, a modern-day dictator, and... Uh, All Republican conservatives are dictators at heart. And they wish to rule not government. Yeah. Now, now Martin Dr Drummond told me, he, he says, uh, we had a discussion about how, how did Chris Christie get elected in a traditional blue state? Same thing with Wisconsin, with Scott Walker, same thing with uh, Minnesotans voting for Michelle Bachman. The these, are all blue, these are all blue states. Mar the Martin, says, Martin says it could be rigged. How? The election could be rigged. Well, they've been wanting to do that ever since 2001 okay. with George W. Bush. Now, now, now the Democrats got together and formed this, uh, this uh, organization called the Blue, Blue New Jersey or some bullshit like that, and, you know, uh, uh, exposing Chris Christie. Well, why didn't the hell they get behind Barbara uh, uh, Buono and and uh, and vote for her and 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 prevent the re-election of Chris Christie? Why didn't they do this then and get behind Barbara Buono? Now all of a sudden, because he won re-election, now they they're they're like now they're doing their job as as progressives. They're not progressives. The, the blue most Jersey. of them are not liberals. They are corporate Democrats. But what about these these people? They are as evil as the Republicans. Well, they sound they sound progressive to me online. Well, that's to get your vote, maybe, or the money to donate to them. Maybe they're looking for money. But what do you think is progressive? Progressive is when you is doing the right thing 
for, for most of the population. Well, name me one Democrat who does that. Politician? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, they give you a few crumbs like my grandfather well, used to say. Well, there you go. My grandfather used to say you get a few crumbs. So there are no real progressives. But, but If you have to depend on other people, corporations, the plutocrats, for your money, you are not going to be progressive. Well, you know the old saying, the proof is in the pudding. Well, after four years of Chris Christie, it was very obvious what Chris Christie was about. And so many people were complaining about him left and right. How in the hell did he get again. enough votes to be Barbara Bono in a landslide victory? Landslide victory after she kicked his ass in two debates on TV. How, how do any Republicans in any states get the votes that they got? How did the Republicans who ran against FDR actually get as many votes as they did? Because there are stupid, evil people out there who vote Republican. So, does the, so in, in a capitalist society, we have a very large percentage of assholes that are naturally assholes. Well, what would you call it? Scott Walker. Didn't he, did he get reelected in Wisconsin? That's correct. That is, Wisconsin is supposed to be a blue state, right? Correct. Minnesota is supposed to be a blue state, correct? Correct. We, uh, uh, hum, uh, uh, hum, 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 uh, Massachusetts had a, a, a few uh, Republican governors. That's supposed to be a very blue state. Yeah. The, the land of, of the Kennedys, That right? Yeah. How the fuck did, did they vote in Republican governors in Massachusetts, beyond me. Well, beyond the uh, the uh, obvious uh, one reason uh, is that, let's say Democrats own the House and the Senate one year or something like that, and then people don't like that, they want to re take the Republicans in the next year. But, uh, you know, that happens too. But you can't explain Republicans in the red states, like for instance in Wolf County in, in Kentucky, how these people can vote for Republicans who point it up to your face every single time to get a chance. I'm a corporatist. I'm an ass kisser for big business and the plutocrats. And you don't I don't give a shit about you. And, and you people in Kentucky, all the Joe six packs, you don't have a pot to piss in. Now, if, you're, if your life never gets better year to year, and your standard of living never rises, and you don't have a pot to piss in, then why on earth are you voting for corporatist conservatives every time? Is it because of your crazy, unproven, ridiculous cult religion? You know, oh. where, where you're so worried about if human life begins with a fertilized egg, instead, you don't, you can't pay your bills? And they're worried yep. about a fertilized, freaking fertilized egg? Yep. You think that's the reason why they vote Republican? It's many reasons. Because they're stupid cults? Up. Or maybe they're just stupid. Women's rights activists. Okay. And female legislators have filed a legal complaint against Turkey's deputy prime minister. How the hell could they do that? Who said last week that women should not laugh aloud in public. Wow. That, isn't that very uh, uh, extremely Muslim? Like very uh, uh, ra radically, radical Islamic uh, opinion? Sounds kind of dictatorial to me. They shouldn't be allowed in public. Uh, you laugh. mean uh, exposing their face? or Laughter! What does this have to do with faith? I didn't hear you say laughter. You said laughter. What the hell did you hear me say? You, you, Women you, should you, not laugh aloud in public. I couldn't hear it. It sounded like la. You said laugh? Laugh. Well, pronounce it. Well, pronounce it. G -A. Well, pronounce it properly so I can hear you. Clean those ears out. Jabroni. I'm yelling here for Christ's sake. Legislator. Alin. 
Nazeliaka said the women filed the complaint with court officials in Istanbul okay. on Monday. So accusing Deputy Prime Minister Bulent Rink of violating charters on gender discrimination. So women are not supposed to express happiness in public. That's correct. In Turkey. They're supposed to be miserable. They're supposed to look miserable all the time and only men can laugh. That's correct. Sounds like they want women to be uh, second class, second to men. Or well, as the Bible says, maybe third. women should be silent in church. It's, it sounds like the family dog has more rights than the women in, in, with this way of thinking. I don't have a family dog. No, I mean like if a man, the man has all the rights and, uh, and his, his dog, he, he probably I'm treats sure his, his dog better than he treats his wife in, in that I'm culture. I'm sure that the biblical statement has more to do with education than anything else. Well, because at that particular yeah. time, women were not highly educated. Well, women are not supposed to be pastors, in, according to the Bible, either. Well, that is true. Yeah. But they can be certain other things in the church, and etc. Yes. And, of course, you have the, uh, the times in ancient Israel when Israel was ruled by women. Well, this is ridiculous about women not laughing in public. This is insane. Well, of course it's ridiculous, but all of those things are ridiculous. What do you think? It, it ain't ridiculous that a, an embryo that breathes like a fish is a human being? Is a human being, or a fertilized egg is a human being? But what's next? If you if you jerk off, your 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 sperm are dying, and you're murdering sperm. That's correct. Oh, you, that's a potential human being. That's correct. Who on earth is going to support? All of these extra babies that will be born according to conservatives, who's going to support them? Who cares? They don't care about that. They don't think long term. Do Once they? the baby comes out, they don't give a damn about it. But this is proof that they don't put any thought into anything. That's correct. They don't think. That's correct. And their own Bible, their own Bible states that uh, Adam was animated by the breath of life. Yes. Not by a sperm entering an oven. No. The breath of the first breath of life. That's the only time that the Bible mentions about life beginning in, in a human, right? Human life beginning is the first breath. Isn't that when the baby's born? The baby, up until then, is gathering nutrition and etc. from mommy. The developmental stages, you know. And when it comes out, it must take it so they smack it on the ass so it takes a breath so it can breathe and live on its own. Before then, it's a parasite on yes. a woman's body. Yes, that is true. This must be understood by these idiots. It's a parasite. Yeah, there's no Maybe. independent cognitive uh, abilities. Of or a, the ability of a to fetus. live on its own. No, can't. Why do you think premature babies, you know, depending on when they come out, die? Because they can't live on their own. It's it like is only because we got modern technology and incubators and this that listen, that we have some of them survive. You know what? Artificial, artificially keeping them living. Yeah. It's like a tadpole that still has part of its gills. If you remove the the bullfrog tadpole from the water. It will suffocate. It's not ready to breathe outside of water because it's not a frog yet. Yeah. So it's the same thing with a with a fetus, embryo, what have you. Baby, Par human baby. Parasite. Parasite. It's call not. It a parasite. It's not ready to live and survive. It can't pull itself up by the bootstraps. But once it's born, Republicans want the baby to pull itself. But a bootstrap, or they, oh, they want the the parents to be there, to be responsible. But if they if they don't like contraception and they don't like abortion, then how do poor parents support the baby? 
As you said before, and we've said before, they do not think these things through. Evidently not. <laughs> Evidently not. We shall end up with a letter to Amy Dickinson. A little change of pace. Whoever Amy Dickinson. Another, uh, Dear Abby. Oh, God. You, you, you're infesting I, this I, show with all I this sniffle-snaffle. I love them. I love them. we got to get some heavy-duty, man, hard-hitting stuff in this show. I must start out by saying... Politics, 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 politics. This is... This is politics. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Not as you're understanding it, but all this right. is politics. Okay, I'm wrong. I'm this all... is human behavior. Okay, I'm all ears. I must start out by saying this is not a midlife crisis. I am 40 year old guy who has never dated anyone over 25. Oh my, he's a very, uh, he sounds like the Dos Equis man, the most interesting man alive. I recently broke up with a 19 year old after dating her for a month. Stay thirsty, my friends. Yeah, wow. She was the one who asked me out. Hey, she. these chicks are asking him out. He's probably rich. But the pressure from her friends and family was too much. Oh, her friends. Uh, yeah, girls, uh, young females have friends that always interfere. They always have something to say. You know, they, they, they pretend they're... They're helping their friend, but in reality, they're just jealous that they don't have a, a real man for a boyfriend. She then started dating someone her own age. Even though she left for school a month ago, we talked on the phone almost every night. Sometimes for hours. I guess she doesn't have her own mind. This girl got to me like no one else ever has. I imagine so. She's nine, nine, She's what, 19? I know we were made for each other. He's in lust, I bet. Though at different times. I can't get her out of my head! I can't get her out of my head! Isn't that a song? Get out of uh, my no, head. No, no, uh, Little Anthony and the Imperials, uh, right? Can't get her out of my head. I think I'm going out of my head. Yeah. Or you, and then what's the other one? Get. Oh, oh, that's something else. Get out of my bed. Get into my car. That that's a song from the '80s, I think. Anyway, continue. I don't know if I should just keep talking to her and stay close, hoping she may still have feelings for me. Ooh, it's because she he's used to that 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 young stuff. That's why he's all upset. Amy's answer. She's gonna. Thank you for declaring that you are not having a midlife crisis. I agree, you are having a dim life crisis. Amy's probably uh, an older woman that thinks it's disgusting <laughs> that the 40-year-old is has dated a 19-year-old. Before I attempt to slap you silly with the phrase, what can you possibly be thinking? I'll tell you what he's thinking. He's thinking right that down at a head he's, down there. He's thinking of that old, that little old bearded clam down below. <laughs> That's what he's thinking. And, and he's thinking with his other head, right. I realize I have some major baggage here. Many of us do. At least those of us with teenage daughters. If you attempt to date mine, by the way, I'm coming after you. He should have said, oh, how's you? send me a picture of your daughter. <laughs> or better yet, I'll send her father. The Faja? Well, you know, it's uh, there was an episode on uh, Everybody Loves Raymond where the uh, ro brother Robert was dating this chick, you know, and he's middle-aged, and he's dating this, this girl in her late teens. The big guy that was a cop, right? Yeah, yeah. Robert Barone was, is yeah, a cool. New York City police officer, and... Uh, and Raymond's wife like yelled at him. She, mm. she 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 took offense to it. I thought she overreacted, but you know, I don't know, people get upset about stuff like that. Uh. You know. Our parents must be worried about this. And I would think that as their contemporary you would try to respect them. 
at least a little bit. But she is also a party to this relationship. Ugh. And based on what you present here, it sounds as if she's still interested in you. She talks to him every day, still. And another thing, uh, parents and relatives and friends of the girl, she happens to be 19 years old. She's le she legally can tell you all to go fuck off. Since she is a barely consenting adult. Barely. She's, she's, she's too. Mm. There isn't much anyone can do legally to prevent you from seeing each other. That's what I'm saying. I, <clears throat> excuse me, I do feel, however, that the dece decent and adult thing is for you to back off. Way off. Oh, she's getting demonstrative with him? She really is? In order to allow her to have a halfway normal life at college. Why? All right, she's an adult. She could date whoever she wants. Why is it so horrible that... Because he, he's 40 years old. That, but, but they're acting like, like she's a minor, for God's sakes. She's not a minor. I realize... She's young. ...that by the time she graduates, she may be too old for you. He may be too old for her, you mean. But since you're made for each other... Made for each other? I assume you'll be happy to wait, in spite of the fact she might outgrow you. He'll get, he'll get decrepit, old and decrepit, and she'll... It's only four years! What she's saying is that she may get too old for him because he's only interested in the youngsters. Oh, okay? I, I follow you. By the time you she gets out of college, she'll be 23. Yeah, wow. Well, okay? Yeah, people, and maybe not his type yeah, anymore. People change. Young people change, uh, even though they're adults, you know, they're, you know, they, um, what's going to happen when he can't, like, put out anymore? She's going to cheat on him with a, with a younger stud. You know, when he's unable to uh, to service her properly. That could happen too. You know. Well, well anyway. You've got a few more years for that to come around. My God. Yeah, that's true. You it's got only to, 40. Hey, there, 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 there are older men who take excellent care of themselves. They, 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 get, they get optimum nutrition. They work out all the time. They're in fantastic shape. And they can perform. You know, compared to somebody who is not nutritionally oriented and does not exercise. Uh, well, you don't have to really... Well, yeah, exercise really has nothing to do with that. But nutrition does, you know. And activity. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Not keeping it in your pants all day long for 25 years. Yeah, it does get rusty, so to speak. <laughs> Figuratively, rusty. You know, you gotta you gotta get the codwebs out. You know, you gotta you yeah, know, it's, yeah. you gotta you gotta do. That's why they say you gotta do what you gotta do. The man. best training for any activity or sport is to do the movement that you do in the sport. You know what I mean? Like the best way to prepare for golf, if you haven't golfed in a long time, is to play golf. Same thing with baseball. Well, Mr. Tiger Wood is playing golf. Now, but How's he's not he doing? doing well. How's he doing? Because of his back injury and surgery that he had. How the hell do you get a back injury in golf? Well, that is twisting motions there. Oh, so it's like it's like carpal tunnel. It's like tennis elbow. You're Would doing. Be, you're making the same motion or or or, or fast fastball rotator, baseball. Rotator, huh? rotator. Rotator cuff. It's always the same motion over and over. Repetitive. I hear you. All right, I understand. So. Well, that wraps it up. And, uh, uh, of course, the summer is rapidly wrapping up. And uh, I don't foresee any holidays until, I guess, Labor Day weekend, right? Labor Day, yes. That's about it. Um, you know, of course, happy birthday, Hulk Hogan. Hulky. Terry uh, Bulea. Yeah, he's, his birthday is, like... 
any day now, or maybe it passed. Yeah, he's a fellow Leo, like myself, and uh, of course Barack Obama is also, amongst many others. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's about it. We'll see you next week. God willing. The creek will rise. Right, for another invigorating, hard-hitting show. And don't forget... And maybe a Dear Abby and uh, Amy Dickinson. Oh no, more of them. But hopefully it's some a hopefully a, a lot of really tough political readings will be coming our way next week. Uh, you know, thank you for joining us and members of the uh, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth Facebook group, be proactive, interact, debate, and post. But if you're going to argue with anybody, stick to the subject. Don't make no uh, personal attacks. No personal attacks. Bad stick, hominin. stick with the subject. Yeah. Oh, all oh, the uh, hominy grits attacks you just mentioned. Yeah, hominin, uh, ad hominem. Ad hominem, hominem, hominem. Yeah. Ad hominem. Ad hominem. Ad hominem, hominy grits. Uh -huh. All right. Say so long to these people. So long, people. This has been a Mega Life Twenty One production.